sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> okay. So first of all, the, our company is quite a young company. Uh, we are a startup, but uh, we are actually uh, providing a banking service for startup. And actually, we are quite fast-growing startup. And uh, currently, in the you know business domain of this uh, uh, banking for startup, uh, actually, we are currently the industry leader. Leader. Uh, so as we grow, the, we already reached the, uh, almost 200 engineers right now. And uh, in fact, the, our uh, uh, software stack is actually quite a, uh, monolithic and, uh, in a sense, quite simple. Uh, it's basically the, doing the you know, web application for full banking operation. As you see from the, any bank web page, we are basically providing those services as a software stack. Uh, and uh, our backend is uh, really completely written in Haskell. And uh, uh, our front end is in TypeScript and the React. And also, the, our infrastructure is uh, basically the managed by the Nix for the underlying dependency man, uh, management. Yeah. <coughs> so, as you said, the, since backend is completely written in Haskell, so with around this 200 engineers, almost two thirds of those engineers are Haskellers. So, we are fairly large Haskellers right now. And so, as I said, we have a really uh, big monolithic app, Haskell app. And the uh, backend is uh, basically just uh, configured as just a single repo. And but inside that repo, we have, uh, you know, basically our build is a uh, uh, cover, and then we have uh, around 60 local cover packages. And however, the most of the code, uh, those code in the local packages uh, is quite small, but the, the, the code in the actually one giant main package, which is called the MWB, uh, Mercury Web Backend, uh, has uh, almost uh, you know, over the, the 10,000 modules, and uh, you know, the size of the code is already the, reached the 1 million uh, source lines of code. So it's a very you know, fast growing uh, and then the very large code base. So as you see the, from the graph from the 2021, actually around the time we had uh, around the, the 1,200 uh, modules or something like that. And then right now, the, within two, three years, actually, we uh, reached that uh, 10,000 modules. So it's a very fast growing. And of course, that means we have a lot of the developer pains with the, that kind of a, the, you know, growing scale. Uh, and also a very uh, interesting point about our code base is uh, it's very template Haskell heavy code base. So yeah, yesterday I actually counted and then actually 4,800 modules were using template Haskell. I, I, I counted it. And so that's, a, I mean, among the Haskell code base, actually big Haskell code base, uh, this is a rather uh, some unique features of our code base, I think. So this is mainly because we use uh, ESOD uh, web stack. And then also we use uh, the PostgreSQL, but we always have the, some you know, template Haskell bindings to the, each of the uh, PostgreSQL the database schemas. And then we also use uh, template Haskell in lots of the business logics. So that's uh, uh, our current code base. And however, uh, I'd like to actually the, you know, proud of uh, ourselves and also when you hold the Haskell community, JGS community. Uh, the build is really fast, actually. So it's on my laptop, this laptop, actually, it, it takes only the eight minutes and 30 views for this million lines of code. Uh, so, so I think, the, you know, and compared with other languages, I think it, uh, this is a pretty much a big achievement, I think. Uh, also, if we, you, I count that this, the dependency footprint as uh, external Haskell packages, not the, our, inside our monorepo, uh, it's about the 550 external packages were our dependencies. So, so this is a kind of a scale of our current uh, uh, development. So, and uh, I'm uh, at, uh, in the company, I'm in the role of uh, this compiler engineer. So basically, I'm uh, taking care of any issues uh, related to GCC. And I'm inside the backend developer experience team, which is inside the big platform team, which corresponds, which uh, is taking care of uh, all this uh, sta uh, uh, stability or infrastructure and uh, developer experience or those kind of issues. So, you know, oftentimes the people, you know, developers, our engineers are uh, complaining about some issues in, you know, uh, stability or some kind of a, some, you know, some shell command uh, failure or something like that. And 
basically I'm judging the whether it is it is the GHC internal issue or not, and then if it is GHC issue, then I'm trying to solve that issues or or so I will also re, uh, report those things to our the collaborators, GHC collaborators. That's uh, mainly what I'm doing, and uh, so for this kind of a, you know collaboration, definitely we need to you know I have an external support, so you know. There are really lots of the GCC issues I encountered, and then, then I cannot solve, uh, or even I cannot imagine how can uh, approach those problems. So we basically are currently working with a, a tweak and uh, well typed, and actually some of uh, you, you know, some of these uh, collaboration is here already. Yeah. So uh, this is basically the GCC mainly GCC expert and also uh, uh, to build system expert from the tweak, including Andreas here. Yeah. <coughs> so, uh, in fact, the you know the this the collaboration group is I I'll say around ten people I guess no, uh, the nine to ten people. But uh, depending on the this uh, uh, the consultant group's uh, uh, situation, we have some kind of uh, time share and rotations. But uh, basically, uh, we all share about uh, some issues around our Mercury code base, and then the you know, basically, you know, we discuss and then distri distribute such work and also uh, con consult with the upstream people as well. Uh, that's a, the, you know, I call it, uh, you know, GHC collaboration around the Mercury. Uh, then this kind of, you know, the, our collaboration, uh, actually, I think uh, we are contributing back to the GHC healthcare community quite well. Uh, basically, we are integrating the GHC as early as possible and the finding issues uh, from our integrations and we, we are basically the working as a kind of a quality assurance of a GHC in a sense. And also sometimes uh, we want to need, we, we need some new features uh, of the GHC, so we want to uh, prototype and derive such a uh, feature development and contributing back to, back to the upstream. Okay. Yeah, so in fact, uh, my story actually starts from some, some special feature which was uh, originated from the, our collaborations. Uh, which is called, uh, we internally call it the template Haskell uh, bytecode linking, which is basically the in, in terms of the GHC uh, options, it's a F prepa bytecode, write e interface, the simplified core bytecode and object code kind of things. Yeah, it was uh, uh, so from that uh, collaboration, uh, at that time, the Alex King uh, in two weeks, uh, identified using the, our code base, the template, has, template Haskell compilation has some kind of bottleneck, uh, and it can be uh, greatly reduced. Uh, the template scale, if you just uh, the schematically see, so if the module A depends on some template scale module, then when A is compiled, then a template scale module is of course previously compiled. Uh, and then the basically GHC invokes some kind of mini GHCI session, run in, uh, interactive or something, and then that uh, basically load the template Haskell pre-compiled objects uh, and then the start the interpreting evaluation of the uh, splices. But, you know, actually that load object, which uh, in internally calls the, the dynamic uh, open uh, system core, and that uh, has some kind of a weird the OS level the, uh, locking behavior. Uh, so we actually don't understand the, what is happening really well, but uh, at least the, the you know, phenomenologically we see the, it actually hurts the, the build parallelism a lot. And, uh, but when, you know, we, the, the, when this collaboration implements this prefer byte code, then we, we are basically the template Haskell uh, code is, uh, uh, you know, compiled to the, the simple, the core, and then the, the core is uh, a simple, uh, Simplified and then simplified core is the serialized into that uh, Haskell interface file, and then the, when the A module is compiled, then this GCI uh, calls this init whole core bindings, and then basically deserialize this core, and then the, on the fly it compiled to the bytecode and the load it. So you know, although that has some some overhead, but it's much smaller overhead than this load object. That we found that this really uh, improved our the build performance a lot. So. We, you know, benchmarked it on the Linux uh, with the 32 cores. Then the, it got like a, you know, the, from the 12 minutes, you know, 40 seconds uh, to the four minutes, uh, four and a half minutes uh, build uh, when it was uh, the 500, uh, 5,000 modules. So this is a really, really exciting news, in fact. So 
in a sense, the, this head integration strategy, uh, I would like to just describe, uh, uh, is uh, started for this benchmark. So that was free power bytecode was shipped in GHC 9.6.1 release. And uh, we were testing to that feature since the 9.6 the release candidate. And uh, basically, you know, we just really, really want to test that feature and then want to benchmark it. So we wanted to, to but our build was uh, fully nixified and hard to actually modify with the custom uh, GCC. So we made kind of a temporary uh, the build so outside of our repo. And then with that uh, temporary build, uh, we started the benchmarking. And then, of course, at first it was a really hard task and kind of an onerous task uh, because uh, we had uh, at the time around 400 uh, external packages and uh, you know, GHC 9.6 didn't, you know, and you know, it wasn't released. So we had to adjust that uh, for the build. And uh, of course, the, the number one actually enabler for that, those uh, the effort was at the time the head of the package, uh, the effort was started. And the, for the foundational packages, uh, those lots of the external packages, depending on the, the foundational packages, uh, which uh, need to be adjusted for the GTC head, uh, was uh, actually, uh, can be quite uh, well adjusted with uh, the head, head of the package. And, but of course, we need to uh, few uh, tens of library uh, the build, uh, driver is adjusted for that GCC 9.6 build. So, but in, in fact, the, the, we are lucky because the 9.6 branch was not that, you know, diverged from the GCC head at that time. So, and then that, that's the, the result from that, uh, is that the number I showed. So, the result was so promising and then we were so excited about that. So, yeah, okay, 9.6.1 uh, came out last year. And then, <laughs> actually the, the GHC 9.6.1 saga happened and, uh, for me. I mean, uh, it's, it was a kind of a nightmare uh, at the time. Because 9.6.1 release, after the one, one month of uh, the next integration, we hastily delivered that GHC 9.6.1 to our developers. And then suddenly, SegaFault happens everywhere. That SegaFault happened uh, especially on the MacBooks. I mean, it, not especially, just only on the MacBooks. So, uh, I was testing the, everything on Linux, but uh, you know, I didn't catch this one. So when, when we're testing, it has a segfault, and when we build, it's a uh, fault. So it turned out that, that it was an RTS concurrent bug uh, on ARM architecture. So if you look at actually the history of the, the GHC the commit, so when we go to the 9.4 to 9.6, actually RTS memory model changed a lot at that time, uh, especially the memory access operation is not, uh, from then on the following the C++ concourse memory model. So that means basically uh, we are not using the explicit memory barrier for the assembly, uh, but uh, we are using the, the some load acquire, the store release, the memory fancy operations. But uh, unfortunately, you know, that was not complete or, uh, around the, the release. Uh, so the transition was incomplete, and but it was uh, not caught the, by, you know, by the developer's eyes. Uh, so then uh, the ARM CPU, which has a you know, fairly oh, uh, different model on this uh, uh, memory model, uh, got caught by that bug. So Ben Gamari was working on that issue, to, but uh, that uh, work was quite the, you know, 20 commits across the multiple branches, and then the, we need to cherry pick the relevant ones as soon as possible and test. So, you know, as you know, this kind of a concurrency bug is one of the most hardest bugs you can actually uh, fix. Uh, so it happened uh, one in 24 views on my laptop, roughly speaking. And of course, the more calls, but the, the more frequent, but that it was really hard. So, yeah, so at the time, because uh, I already had this kind of benchmarking uh, the setup, so I had to work on that uh, for that fix. So, uh, so in this case, the really testing multiple branches on the GTC head was uh, really necessary. So, and then the, Whenever I just uh, change it and then comp uh, compare the different commits and whether that works or not, then, uh, you know, as you know, the, I have to, you know, if in normal build setup, I have to build all the dependencies, 400, uh, 380 packages, uh, which usually takes three hours. And it was a really painful uh, the experiment. So basically, I just uh, use that, you know, somehow the Kaba's inability to detect the GHC binary changes. So 
you know, we build the, all the dependencies you know, with a certain version of GTC and then swap the GTC, uh, but that it doesn't ha change any hashes. And then our target project is uh, just built with the different version of GTC. And then uh, well, with that test, actually, you know, finally, we found that uh, uh, the right commit for test, uh, to solve that uh, issue. Okay. Okay. So. Now that problem got happily solved by cherry picking, uh, but in fact, in, in on the upstream, uh, it was uh, solved. Uh, you know, when the GCC 9.6.4 was out, so it's quite a significant later. But uh, for for us, this is a very crucial the the strategy. So, so I just found that this is really useful, and that this is uh, really helpful for our uh, you know driving basically. <laughs> so so from then on, basically, I made a strategy like a uh, you know. No, we always follow the GTC head, and we always follow the also our the product project head. So it's a double head chasing, but it's a hard, of course. But uh, you know, once it's done, and then every work is incrementally done. Uh, so it's a quite doable. So we are going to, we start to support the GTC head and then two major releases on two the major platforms, and of course this head head packages was a key enabler for that. Okay. Then the, our efforts the immediately actually the uh, rewards our, myself because uh, we you know we were able to test the GHC 9.1 uh, before the, just before the release or I think just after the release I think uh, and then we just found that uh, it has a very serious memory uh, leak bug and uh, with our repo it reached the 100 gigabyte uh, so. So that issue was uh, immediately reported in Jubin uh, to, uh, in our collaboration and to fix that issue um, just a few days later. But unfortunately, that was just after 9.81 out. So it's uh, fixed in 9.82. So it would be a real hassle if we really hustled to that GCC 9.8 uh, upgrade. And then the, with that setup, we found another another mem memory box, in fact. So, you know, the GTC, I had some memory retainer box uh, with a mode interface, with also the lazy I.O. And uh, that also gives up, you know, you know, by the iter iteration, we actually found that box and then also uh, fixed it to uh, that. And also, it's not bug, but in fact, the uh, GTC mode interface uh, has some very inefficient representation. So seldom used uh, uh, data structure is just occupying memory all the time. Uh, and then basically we just got rid of those uh, uh, unnecessary things out of that. So I would like to say, <coughs> yeah, and then the, this work actually spawned a lot of uh, the next uh, new feature works and then the, basically the profiling, the GCC now supports the, the profiling and dynamic uh, combined mode, combined flavor, uh, which is uh, quite a new uh, uh, things. Uh, probably if you, you know, build the recent GCC, you see the, it has a prof, underscore time of uh, flavor as well. Uh, that's that's uh, actually the from uh, our uh, efforts in uh, profiling the GTC. And also the ERAS profiling and then the GTC debug improvement, those things are all tested over our the, the repo. Yeah, so I would like to say whether it's a, a, it's a stable so with this the double head chasing strategy, uh, you know, in fact, this is the com this comes down to the issue of you know the you know, last you know Simon talks. So it's a, about question about the stability. So basically, I just uh, from my experiment with just nine point seven nine eleven, most of the pain is not the language change. Language change is quite rare. And type check is always uh, quite good uh, with a different version of GTC. But the dependency update is really the pain. Uh, and then the, basically, we have tiered dependencies. So normal dependencies are usually OK. But the, of course, base and core library changes. So input should change it. Uh, then the, we have to just change uh, adjusted. But the uh, template Haskell libraries are a little bit uh, uh, painful because uh, template Haskell has ASD open changes. But the, Definitely, GHC API dependent libraries or the tooling, especially code formatter, LSP, and plugins, they are quite hard. So, so it's kind of a, you know, I need a little bit of effort, the rearranging our uh, our the repo to you know disabling certain uh, plugins or something like that. So, so this is uh, basically the issue of the GHC API stabilization. Uh, 
But anyway, you know, this effort can be all shared so among the, uh, across the, our the, you know, community. So, you know, we have this nice infrastructure head hackage, so we can actually share those efforts uh, and then, you know, we can okay, thrive together with the GCC head. Okay, so since uh, I almost uh, uh, ran out of time, so uh, I just uh, mentioned briefly and then, then you know, there, there will be talked uh, uh, in uh, tomorrow, the Andreas talk. So, so, so we actually, the, from this all efforts, the, we found that our you know, scale is already reached. The Cabal may not handle our uh, scale very well. So we are now the, investing quite heavily on the, the distributed build system. So we are currently working on that. And uh, uh, so the main plan is basically, you know, the, so GHC make is currently uh, like this. So it has this uh, down sweep dependency analysis phase and then up sweep the, the compilation phase. But uh, what distributed build system means basically this whole the GHC make is deconstructed and then basically all this the compilation action uh, can be either remotable and also the artifacts can be cacheable. So uh, in, in our collaboration, we were making, uh, we are making the uh, significant uh, the, uh, progress there. So in GHC upstream already has lots of the uh, uh, MRs, has, and yet not, not everything is merged yet, but uh, lots of the, the progress uh, from this. And then you know, tomorrow the Andreas will show actually the, the working uh, environment. Yeah, so, uh, so this is a you know, list of our the, the, the contributions. So, and then also it, it, so, uh, it succeeded in building our project. Uh, so, and then the, we also de definitely the, for this GHC head integration strategy uh, uh, need to integration with the, the new build system. And then we are also working on this, uh, you know, kind of official support of head integration into that system. Okay. I will stop here. <laughs> Thank you. When there was a new feature in GHC 9.6 and you had trouble with 9.6, did you consider backporting it to 9.4 and using the existing GHC but with the new? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, I mean if I, I go back to the <laughs> the, uh, the, that time, then probably that uh, just backporting that feature to the 9.4 would, would be the, the more the reasonable choice. But uh, in the end, I end up with the just uh, you know making everything working with the head. And then that, you know, from then on, Actually, what I owned is much more than actually what I lost. So I feel like, uh, you, know, hey, you know, I'd like just uh, stay this on this strategy, in fact. Yeah. I think that this is a very good, although very aggressive, but a very good strategy uh, for the whole community, I think, yeah. So for future, you would, again, switch to GHC head rather than asking, like, if you work with Tweak or well typed for a feature to be uh, developed against a stable GHC? And yeah, I, I mean, I would like to just, uh, I mean, be more progressive, you know, in that direction, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. sounds good. Yeah.